Gates of Hell, a release of the year 2020 for Nintendo Switch. Yes, this horrible year 2020 that we're currently living in. This is a first person shooter where you have to fight hordes of monsters and shut down the gates of hell. Sadly, you're not playing some badass space marine with a big fucking gun, but rather some guy with a sword who can acquire other equally ineffective weapons, such as pain staves and Satan's hammer. Man, you know, you know, actually, you know what? This doesn't look so great. It plays kind of like crap. I kind of regret spending the $5.99 on this. You know, for $1 less, you could have bought Classic Doom or Doom 2 or Doom 64. All those games play great on the Switch. Probably not as good as the classic keyboard and mouse combination, but certainly better than this pile of shit. Nah, you know what? Nah, I'm out. Maybe somewhere down the line, I might give it another shot, but actually, you know what? The game's on Steam, right? You could play it on the PC. So maybe that Civi fellow can probably look at it. I don't know. It probably his sort of thing, I guess. I don't know. Okay, so that's done. So, uh... Oh, Gates of Hell. Yeah, you know, I'm kind of curious. I mean, it's been a year since I last touched that thing. I wonder if they, they, they actually they got around to fixing it, or making it better, or making- Ah, oh, fuck! God damn it. Gates of Hell, released in May of 2020 for Nintendo Switch, courtesy of Super Icon Limited. I think that's what they're called. Is a first-person shooter think that's what it's supposed to be, where you control some dude tasked with fighting the ever-spawning forces of hell. You start off with a sword, but can also find other weapons and their unique ammo, as well as power-ups that will grant you temporary boosts such as try damage and things of that nature. If you die, the game ends and you get a verdict on how you fared, usually based on your score. Spoiler, they're all bad until you start beating some levels or something. Upon starting the game, you'll be given five available maps for you to choose your starting level. Each map has two rounds for you to contend with. An Earth round where you survive five waves of monsters from, for a certain amount of time and are penalized for all the demons you left alive, resulting in negative scores if you left a lot of demons alive. Whatever. And the second round, the Hell round, has you killing a number of demons on a platform before facing off against the boss of the map and then you beat the boss and move on to the next level to go through the whole process again until you eventually reach the final 11th round to get the ultimately mediocre ending. So I'll note a couple quick positives because there are positive aspects to Gates of Hell as impossible as it may seem. The maps themselves, when you can see them that is, aren't too shabby as arena style maps. Weapons, ammos, and power-ups will always respawn on the same spots, so you know where to go if you need to restock on supplies when needed, and you'll be restocking quite a bit. You can collect more than two weapons and cycle through them. Control for the most part is pretty solid when the game is running fairly decently. Typical console FPS style controls so it works, though there is no jump button, and you'll see why that's a bit of a problem. Finally, while there's no map function, you do have a radar on top that shows you where pickups and monsters are. They're depicted as green pickups and red monster dots, respectively. This helps in this sort of wasteland. And honestly, the concept itself isn't too bad. If executed well enough, it offers some mild bit of entertainment, but sadly, those are all the positives of Gates of Hell, and I will try and blow through the rest of it as quickly as possible. First off, the load times are fucking awful. They're long. They're about as long as sitting through all those logos whenever you start up Doom 64 on a modern console. Except you could skip the logos and play a great game afterwards. That's not the case here. A bit of a treat for you folks. We're gonna sit through the loading screen while the opening logos for Doom 64 play in the corner. So you can see for yourself how long these fucking load times are. You know what, we'll make a little game out of it. Let's see which loads up some in-game footage first. Hmm? This footage has not been altered. I have not messed with the footage. We're playing this as it happens. 
You already have the, the copyright information and the, the photo sensitivity warnings. And uh, there you go. You got Doom 64, the, uh, the infamous, the or infamous, the famous Doom 64. Do we call, do we call it famous? <laughs> Anyways, point being, you have in-game graphics for Doom 64 while we're still loading the fucking thing on the gates of hell. So, long-ass amount of time, but I'm making you suffer the same pain I did, and, and find- Oh, for fuck's sake! God damn it! The overall visual style Gates of Hell is trying to achieve here can be best described as fucking awful. The stylized dark goobering goober art style with dark environments and ugly lighting for the earth levels and shiny goobers for the hell levels is an absolute eyesore. Even in levels and broad daylight, everything is shrouded in perpetual darkness, which makes things nigh impossible to make out. This is especially hazardous on hell levels, which take place on platforms you could easily fall off of and die. Oh, by the way, you gotta love this spawn segment. Brilliant. Even worse, when monsters really fill up the arena, the performance starts to chug at what can charitably be described as a glacial frame rate. It's not good. Your character is generally slow moving and there's a button that toggles the auto run, which is on by default and it feels slow. Imagine having to walk in this game. On top of that, certain obstacles that appear to be something you could easily walk over will block you off completely, acting like invisible walls. If only you had a jump button to jump over these things easily. Oh, and sometimes your character will have a hard time picking things up. It's not a matter of you maxing out your ammo count because I don't think there's a maximum or anything like that. Lame. You start off with a sword, which is not that useful of a weapon, quite frankly. There are weapons you could pick up, and each weapon has their own unique ammo. No two weapons share the same type of ammo, which would be fine if the weapons were unique, but other than maybe a couple of heavy hitters, like the hand cannon, for example, will have a blast radius of sorts with each projectile blast. Most of the weapons do feel the same, however. They don't feel like a big upgrade over the other, it's just varieties of pew pew. Stuff like the Power Staff or the Flame Hammer or whatever they are called should be big heavy hitters because of how rare they pop up, but they don't feel it. They just feel like variations of just pew 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 and that's it. There's no satisfaction in killing enemies with these things. Maybe if you had like a half decent shotgun or a really crazy weapon that makes it worthwhile, but nah. And then there's the sound, which is also equally fucking awful. Gates of Hell tries to be atmospheric with the lack of music, while well, aside from the awful heavy metal bits in between gameplay, attempts some ambiance with the constant growling zombie noises and it just sounds awful. I like atmosphere when it's done right, but this is just bad. I mean, there's no other way I could really put it. Gates of Hell is fucking awful. It looks awful, it plays awful, it sounds awful, there's no redeemable value to it, not even as a sort of so bad it's good fodder for a stupid video, this game sucks minus 10 stars or whatever. This is truly, unquestionably, an absolutely wretched video game. You want a fast paced first person shooter fighting Hellspawn? Go play Doom. New Doom, Old Doom, Crispy Doom, whatever, doesn't matter. Any of that is yards better than Gates of Hell. I'm done. Good night.